Hello, and this is Zoe Kant. Woo! And welcome to Shot of Confidence with, drumroll please, Akua. Yeah, that's right. Uh, today I am doing the show solo, so I thought I'd come on and talk about um, imposter syndrome. As you know, uh, I've started this, you know, soft campaign around helping you to think about how to share your positive news um, consistently and without it feeling icky or without you thinking that it's bragging or arrogant. Um, and what I realized is that it's going to take a lot of practice. Um, and the way that I've been going about it so far, I think is maybe a little bit full on for some of you out there because, you know, I know it takes time and effort to come to terms with accepting your brilliance. Um, and that's something that I want to talk about today. One of the things that can really help you accept your brilliance is reframing how you think about failure. Because if you think about failure, or as I like to call it, um, adopting a learning attitude, you can really um, save time and energy, but also um, become more confident and actually be able to share your good news positively and then consistently. So I thought I would tell you um, a quick story about how I have done that and also um, what I talk about in the book in regards to this. So in chapter seven, which is called Spring Cling, Humble Brag and Gratitude, I talk about how I have gone to a place to think about failure very differently. And in February uh, this year, I went for a networking event and I, I just started my coaching business. So the failure of my uh, startup being sport was still, you know, sort of raw, but I, I'd gotten over it. Um, and I was there to kind of talk to everyone about my coaching um, and to learn about pitching. And what was interesting about that is I was able to talk about um, my three startups that I'd done before um, and in a way that was positive and not really making me feel negative or worried. Because in the past, when I thought about my listening of startup failures, it would be an ache. It would not be something that um, would be going around, you know, telling everyone. But in a community of entrepreneurs, that is the nature of the game. You know, you have to do a lot of different startups um, or be part of different teams to understand how to make things work and how to find your own groove and make your own path to the success that you desire. Because remember, everyone's um, success metric is very different. Um, and for me, I was still grappling with trying to find my own particular success metric, but also um, really being able to lean into my own gifts and talents. So what's interesting for me was to go to that um, meetup at this co-working space um, and to tell people, you know, hey, yeah, I've done three startups and now I'm on the fourth. And I'm still going, like a little, little energizer energize bunny. In fact, one of my good friends has just described me as an energizer bunny who just keeps going. You know, I get knocked down, I come up again, I get knocked down, and I come up again. And I think you have to um, find your own um, ways to do that. Uh, and part of that can be reframing failure. Um, so, you know, when I was talking to people about the fact that I'd done these three startups, um, and I spent time and energy really trying to make them work, um, and they didn't work, and now I'm on to the next thing, they were like, wow, that's really like impressive. And I was kind of like, well, that's just what I do. You know, I just keep um, coming back, and I keep learning from these things. Um, and it's not to say that I repeat the same wheel like a little hamster, no. Um, it takes time and effort to, you know, come to terms with what's gone wrong with each and every venture um, and to think about what, what the specific learnings from there. And then to think about, you know, do I still want to be in this entrepreneurial space or do I want to find a full-time job? And that's fine too. But you need to understand that it is a journey and it definitely is not overnight success. Um, and the people that we got up to have all had to go on their own journey. Um, and, you know, their 10, 20 years maybe 50 years of work, um, you know, looks really easy and looks like it was really um, fast and instant, but you've not seen them grafting. You've not seen 
all the effort and the, the years when people weren't following them and people weren't looking up to them, but they just kept at it. Now, my point is that you have to build up these skills of personal resilience and reframing failure so that you are able to think more positively about when things go wrong, because that is an inevitable part of life that you will make a mistake, something will go wrong. But what is the key is, is not lamenting it um, for days, weeks and months. Yeah, feel bad, obviously. Um, but, you know, in so doing, it's just to, you know, get rid of that negative feeling um, and then to really think about what can you do differently? How can you learn from that? And in fact, what I'm always talking about is how can I practice um, so that I can improve? Because in getting to that space, um, that is the space where we get to like all of good personal growth. And what I do also say is that sometimes we need to feel the pain so that we know that we want to change and we really want to do things differently. Um, and, you know, only till we really get to that real place of despair and hopelessness um, can we sometimes get the creativity and inspiration that we need to try something completely different, to, to start again, um, and to build ourselves back up. So I just want to end the episode by um, going through a couple of ways that you can um, celebrate your wins or talk about yourself positively and more consistently. Okay, so you can write down um, or record, you know, on a particular day of the week, three wins or one win. Let's start with one because we're growing and building up our muscles here. Um, or you can privately every day, a weekday, let's say, write down a win that you want to celebrate just, you know, to yourself, for yourself, for no one else. Um, thirdly, if you're feeling bold, why not share a post on social media with either a positive feeling, like I challenge you all to do this this week, or a specific, if you're able to do so, about what's really gone well for you. Um, because as I said in my post, positive emotions are contagious, and that's a good thing for us. You know, we want to feel happy, we want to feel motivated, and we want to feel inspired. Um, and it's not just a one-sided story. No, it's the ups and the downs, okay? But I think that what I'm really wanting you to focus on is accepting that you should put yourself out there and you should um, speak it, own it, and as my good friend Burnett Hollis said, toot your own horn sometimes because in building that muscle and that ability to speak highly of ourselves, we also build confidence. And I know that actually, um, culturally, in some places, that's not the done thing. But as I'm always saying, it's not about doing it in a way that is um, culturally out of sync to your particular community. There are definitely ways to do it. And I urge you to think about ways that you can do it that would be culturally appropriate, but also really help you to want to do it consistently because it's in the consistency that we get used to it and it becomes second nature. Because if we only do it on certain occasions, um, it becomes really hard to like draw upon that little bit of juice um, that you, you that you you use to, to get there. But if you're doing it more regularly through other practices, let's say whether you have a gratitude journal and you write something that you're grateful for, or you have a, a time every week where you talk to your friend or a trusted person and you just talk about, you know, all the positive things that's happened to you. Um, and not even just positive things, you know, it might be just something that made you laugh, but something that's given you a good feeling, you know, because good feelings promote um, confidence. And once you're in those zone, in that zone, it's um, where you can feel more adventurous and increase your appetite um, for risk. So what I would love to end the video with is to tell you that I realise that um, I am quite exuberant because that's just me. And I, and I love to be 
um, exuberant and passionate uh, about um, building your confidence. But I realized I need to take a step back and go slowly with you. So uh, what I would really love to do is to start a, a weekly um, chat um, for women who want to um, share their successes in a confidential setting. So we'll be chatting house rules, whatever happens on the Zoom stays on the Zoom and goes nowhere else. And I would love you to put yourself forward or suggest a friend um, and get in touch with me. I know I'm going to start and the program will be just me on the call for a long time, but I believe in you out there. I know that this is something you guys want to do. Um, so let us, you know, learn together in a safe environment. Um, and I think that once you start doing it in this private community that I'm going to be setting up, you'll then over time be able to um, do it for yourself, um, you know, out loud um, in public. Uh, and it won't be um, so icky or, um, you know, just feel awkward because it's a skill that you've been learning and practicing. So without further ado, be bold, be brave, back yourself, and of course, be your number one cheerleader.